Alright, so hi everyone in there, YouTube. This is for a 2000 uh, Yamaha R1 engine. Like, uh, I do rebuilds myself, so I'm gonna do a quick video on how to put on the gear shifter because there's um there's a video on YouTube telling you about how to do the rebuild but it doesn't tell you the how to put on the gear shifter okay so i'm going to show you guys how to actually do it if you look over here you see there's a gear shifter right there's this part this thing is kind of difficult to put on because there's a spring that you have to get i don't know if you guys can see that spring right there there's a spring you have to get the spring in from that thing you see where my finger is my first finger you have to get the spring over that onto the hook onto the back of this thing right here if you look closely, you see that thing right here, my finger, my middle finger right there? That hook has to go into that. If you don't get that in, the shifter won't shift. Like, you'll see, you'll notice that, like, you see how it's in uh, gear right, uh, neutral right now? Like, it, the wheel spins freely. That's how it's supposed to spin. But when you shift it, like, you see when you turn the wheel? You turn the shifter to a, to a pretty much to the left or the right? That puts the bike into gear now, right? how the wheel still spins freely that means i haven't really had any oil in the engine so that's kind of why it does but when you actually spin this and it goes into gear like you'll notice the wheel will stop moving freely right it tendency that has to do that when you don't have the thing in but this spring this spring is what you're supposed to basically do to keep it in like so all you have to do is basically there's a port there's a port on the back of this thing right here you see that thing right there this port has to go into that, you understand? And there's no like bolt or anything to hold it down or anything like that. You just have to like get it in there and then once you get it in there, you put the spring on it. The spring keeps it steady in place. So I'm kind of going to do a demonstration right now on how to do it. So you can see how to do it right quick. Hold on. You can see how to do it right quick, right? So if you kind of watch me, I got to kind of put the camera down so you can kind of see, right? Like. Uh, let me turn it on to a side. Hold on. Okay, sorry about that. Like, you gotta kind of see right there. Let me see if I can rest the camera down and I'll show you how it's done. So let me put it down for a second. you guys can see that right there um do you see that port right there that there's a uh, two pins where this has to slide into because the actual shifter itself it has to sit on this thing if it doesn't sit on this thing it won't go and you'll notice it'll get stuck like right here and as well this ball thing that you see right here on top you see that little ball thing right there that thing has to be in the grooves right the grooves i mean like are like right there it's pretty much in neutral the wheel will spin you can see that right the wheel spins right but at the same point the ball right here it still sits on top of this thing and that is what makes it go back and forth into neutral there's now the spring that you have to get from right here remember that spring i was seeing with my finger is you have to get that spring from right here to here and it, it like that's the most the trickiest part of it all is just getting that spring to there because the spring has to stretch right there's like a elasticity in the spring itself and the spring can pull from right here to this loop right here and that's what actually gets the shifter to stay in place after you put on the gasket and everything like the gasket is don't forget to put on the gasket right and the gasket is it goes on after but right until then you have to put the spring from here to there so you got to kind of give me a little while to put on the spring and then i can show you the, the ending result
if you can see like the spring is giving me kind of a, a problem to put in but that's what I was trying to tell you it's the tricky part the spring like it, it takes a while a bit of nugging and tugging to get at it but once it gets on it'll be on there like give me a second Alright, so as you can see, I've, I've finally managed to get the spring on. As you can see right, you see it in there? You see how the spring is supposed to be set? That spring has to be set like that, right? Like if you don't have the, if you have the spring upside down, like this is where I messed up the first couple of times. I'm gonna show you guys right now. Like this spring, I tried to put it on upside down the first couple of times, right? Because I never actually put the spring on, right? This is important the reason why I'm making this video. I never tried to put a spring on, so it's, I had to t play around, play around with it. But the correct way to put the spring on is to supposed to put it. You see that pink part where it's showing right there? That color part of the spring is supposed to be showing towards you. Like, depending on the spring you have, sometimes it's yellow, sometimes it's pink. I have uh, the pink one, but it has to be facing in this direction. You can, the best way to do it is to use a vice grip pliers, okay? Take a vice grip pliers and hold it from here because if you try to hold it from up there, it's not gonna be able to pull the thing over and you're gonna keep nugging and nugging and nugging on it until you finally, like, it's just gonna be a pain in the ass the more and more you nug at it, right? So the, the best way, take the vice grip, you see the vice grip I have right here? Look at this, like, it's like a needle nose vice grip, right? You take a needle nose vice grip and you put it in there and you stretch the spring all the way until you see that hook and then pull it over the hook. The easiest way, don't try to do it from this side to go there because this pin is gonna is a pain in the ass to try to get it over. Your best bet, and also the needle nose won't stretch to here, right? Sorry, the camera, the way the camera, I'm holding the camera. The needle nose won't stretch to here. You have to take the, you have to put it from here first and then stretch it from there to here. That way you don't have a problem getting your needle nose pliers in and out of there because the worst thing is to hook it onto there and it's still being jammed into the part where you're trying to hook it on. And then when you pull out your needle nose now, then the whole thing is gonna come coming out. So your best bet is start from there and put it in there. And as you can see now, uh, my gear is fully active now. You see that pin? It's slotted in there letting you know that it's stiff. That means that it's fully engaged now. So it's still in neutral. There's a pinpoint where it balances out in neutral and that's where you have to kind of get it on. You see that there's a slot in the actual gear there. You see that slot right there? That's to let you know that it's in neutral, but you have to kind of set up the gear into the point where like it gets to there. You have to kind of rotate it, rotate it, rotate it, rotate it until it gets around till you feel the transmission go. 
and I'll make this popping sound. And once it makes that popping sound, then you know that it's in, that it's like it's actually out of there. But you have to hear, wait till you hear the popping sound. If you try and turn it the next direction and hook this thing up into there, it's gonna be hooked up into gear, and then the transmission will recognize that specific spot as gear, as neutral, and it's supposed to be, and it's supposed to be a gear. So be careful what you're doing when you're installing this. Try to install it on the direct point, so that way you see the transmission still smooth, really. Because if it's still in neutral, it's still supposed to move freely until you shift it. But if you shift it, it's gonna come back out of neutral. And my suggestion, do not do it without oil in the engine. Because when you do it without oil in the engine, like what I just did, it gets sticky. And then when you try to shift it back into neutral, the, the, actual, the actual gear lever itself, it won't spin. And then you have to fuck with it kind of, sorry for my language, you have to kind of mess with it uh, to get it back into the, the, the point where it can move again. Like how my finger can just spin the whole sprocket like that. The engine sprocket's supposed to be able to spin like that right just turn it left to right just make sure it spins and the clutch part uh, I didn't make a video on this but the clutch part the easiest way to get this on a guy shows you oh you're supposed to use an, uh, pretty much a magnetic tool to get that on I didn't use a magnetic tool what I did I basically turned the actual there's that little loose thing that holds in the clutch plate I turned it to the left where the actual entrance is supposed to go in and I lined it up and once you line it up all you got to do is kind of put the gasket on on the clutch plate and like bang it in there a couple of times give it like three or four or five bangs and you hear it go on but it has to you have to have your dowels in there because the dowel will hold the gasket on if you don't put the dowels in there the gasket won't stay on and when you when you put it on to, to let you know that the, the clutch is engaged you have to you, there's a dimple in it you see that arrow right there that arrow lets you know that the, there's the clutch is engaged that dimple that you see right there you see my finger right there that dimple that dimple has to be aligned exactly where you see that arrow that's you know the clutch is engaged. You see when I turn the clutch and then I turn the transmission now. If you look at my hand, hold on. I turn the clutch, you still see the transmission still engaged, right? Until I shift it, right? Which is what I just did. So when you take, even if you want to play around with it just to see if it really works, take a vice grip and hold it on the shifter boot and you turn, you, you hold it on the shifter and you turn it, you just kind of fiddle with it. And you hear it shift back and forth in the gear. Once it's in gear, you, you'll see the engine sprocket stop moving so freely. It won't move now. It'll just be stuck there. That means it's in gear. Like, you can't move it unless the engine is running. So you have to, like, kind of fiddle with it around or take back off your, your, um, your gear shifter boot that covers it. Make sure your dowel is in so that when you put back on the gasket, you're able to get the gasket in there. Because the dowels are not in there, you're going to have to hold the gasket onto the, the thing and put the piece back in there. So just make sure you do that and don't worry about magnetic tool as long as you turn the thing that little you know the thing inside the clutch plate uh, as long as you turn the actual the teeth thing and push it in towards the clutch plate it'll guide in that direction anyway so you don't need a magnetic tool to try and actually do it on because you can fully see my clutch is engaged as you see when I turn it around my arrow and everything is engaged right I turn it it's all engaged, it lines up, and you can't turn it back the next way, that's how you know it's engaged. If the clutch plate's not engaged, you'll be able to turn it freely, this sprocket, this little thing right here, it'll go right around, right? So when it's engaged, you can only go one direction, and you'll see the, the dimple line up with the arrow point. So, that was basic, that was your basic, uh, sorry about that, that was basically a quick review on um, how to put on the gear shift and how to put on the clutch plate a lot more easier than using a magnetic tool because I didn't have a magnetic tool to use and that's what the guy decided to use in the video right but I don't have that as you can obviously see I have limited amount of tools you can see right here vice grip uh, me a metric set of um, a metric set of tools that I have over here and some other metric stuff over here and a couple extensions so if you're limited on tools like I was and you're trying to rebuild back the motor right basically then you have to kind of take these guidelines on um, it's just a quick set just to put this on the gear shifter on and also one more thing when you, this is an r1 engine you can also do it with like a zx6r or any type of bike you're trying to do it, but also remember to try and put the bolts into like a separate bag or a separate basket have you if you when it comes back to putting back the motor that's where you're going to have the most confusion i can tell you about a dozen of these bolts i put back and they're not directly supposed to go in there although it fits in there it's not directly supposed to go in there so just remember like try to bag out the bolts that you know what you're doing so that when you start the project again or when you're putting back the engine now you know where everything goes because you're going to have a whole bunch of bolts where you don't know where the crap they go and then you're also limited on tools to make it even worse right so just remember and also when you're putting back in on your timing chain try to make sure that um 
that you don't really crank the transmission too much because if you crank the trans the not the transmission sorry about that the clutch the clutch boss too much if you crank that too much it'll turn the transmission the camshaft in the transmission and then you're gonna have a problem putting on the timing chain because you see now now that I cranked on the the, the the nut into the clutch boss now now when I'm trying to put on the the actual timing chain it's actual the, the shield that holds the timing chain on as you can see my finger right there that right there seeing it's already to a point so I kind of got to watch out because there's a there's an actual sensor that holds the timing chain right there I don't know if you see that sensor that sensor has to be in place I and mean, once you see that sensor is touching you see that it's like a like a little bit of millimeter with a gap because this sensor controls this plate this shield that tells that the bike that this shield is still in place so just remember that uh you don't turn the cam the camshaft to the crankshaft too much that um it moves this thing or wait till you put this thing on because if you do there's gonna be a pin and the pin behind it you have to line the shield onto that pin before you turn the, the timing chain because if you turn it without a timing chain on you're gonna have a problem kind of putting on the the actual the camshafts when they get up here because like I basically forgot where some of the stuff goes and I had to like pretty much like scoop and dig and figure everything back out so you see your chain guides are right here make sure you have your bolt into the chain guide because there's also a bolt that goes into to the chain guide right and that's what he doesn't show you in the video right it's just like a quick review of how to put on the timing chain and yada 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 but like he's not doing a detailed description this is why I'm doing a detailed description so that way you know that there's a bolt right these bolts that go into here there's a bolt that goes into the timing chain and there's also two bolts that go into the sensor and you have to make sure the sensor is on you know so just remember that and remember not to lose any of your guides and sometimes if you have extra parts laying over from you building the motor try to um try to keep some of them because you never know if you might lose because i as you can see like the shims that's supposed to go on let me turn the engine upside down so you guys can get a better look As you guys should see, this is what I'm talking about losing parts and shit, right? Like, sorry my language again. But you see the shims right here? These shims have to be in there, okay? A lot of people don't realize the valves has shims in them. Like, if you take off one of these valves right here, there's a small little shim that connects the valve, the actual valve to the actual valve cap right here. And it has to be in there. Otherwise, you know what's gonna happen? The engine's gonna backfire, right? You see that cap right there? I'm missing three of them. But all the other valve stems are in there. If you look closely, all the valves are at one level. The any way to tell if you, one of your valves are off, just look if how the, well the valve is sitting in the actual manifold itself. If you look to the side, you can tell all my valves are sitting correctly. That means they all have shims and they all are sitting directly correctly. If you don't have the shim, you're gonna notice the valve will sink in and it's not supposed to sink in like that. Like you'll see three of your caps without the, the shims, they'll sink right in. It's a small little piece, but the little piece will stop you from backfiring because each one of these valves, they control every one of the cylinder. This part, this set of valves, three right here, controls cylinder one. This controls cylinder two, this controls cylinder three. So if you notice that my two shims are missing out of cylinder two, so that means that that's the cylinder that's gonna backfire the most. See, so if you see one, two, these cylinders because the two front cylinders are missing the shims right and this is the, the first cylinder is only missing one shim so you have to remember always remember to put your shims in and try not to lose these these are the easiest things to lose on the engine while you're doing an engine rebuild the shims because they're the size of your fingertip hold on let me take out one shim and let me show you exactly what a shim is You see this stuff right here? You see this little this little piece right here? This is your shim. This has to be into the valve. You understand? You see where this goes? It's like a little dot of an eye. And this is the easiest thing to lose in the engine rebuild right here. This little piece. But yet still, it's one of the pieces that you're going to need eventually when you're putting that back together. As you can see, my finger has to go right into where the shim is. You see that part right there? You just press the shim down into it. And you'll see it go down you see and make sure the shim is not sitting cockeyed in there because if it's sitting cockeyed in there you see when the valves start kicking when the actual the, the, the valve caps start kicking against the, the camshafts it's gonna make a backfiring sound and that's what i was just saying five seconds ago so like watch out for that 
just make sure these shims are there and make sure you have the shim inside the cap because there's a shim inside all the valve caps right there you see that shim that right there it makes the contact between the bottom the bottom cap and the center valve so make sure that you put that on there so that way it makes the contact sound it's going to be very close ratio but also watch the valve caps you're putting because the bigger valves are supposed to go against the exhaust the exhaust camshaft right these go against the engine camshaft those smaller valves right there so watch what you're doing because some of them may look the same but they're not the easiest way to test the valve cap is to take one of these if it looks smaller take one of these and fit it inside there if it fits inside there that means it's not meant for there that means it's meant for up here all these ones right make sure that the valve stem itself is not sitting cockeyed any way shape or form at all even though i, I checked all of these i'm going to recheck them before i put on the camshafts so j just pay attention right here and kind of take your, your finger you don't have to take anything and hammer it down because obviously the valve but just trying to take your finger and trying to smooth it out make sure it's equal on all surfaces right so that way it doesn't have any cockeyed in or anything in there and it's all pumped in there you see my finger right all right and then after you put that in there all you do is just take the valve cap you put it right on voila there you go your valves are installed right your valve stems are installed your valve shims are installed that's all it takes just make sure that this is not sitting cockeyed and like i said if you want to know if it's sitting cockeyed just look at the side of the engine put the engine at the highest point of anywhere you are and turn to the side and look at all the sides of the motor if one of the valves look like like it's sitting cocked like a certain way like the rest of the valves are not sitting that's the one that has a problem you either have the valve stem sitting cockeyed in there or you gotta or you have it like like it, it's it's not down there that means either you gotta torque down the valve inside the manifold or you gotta put it on a, you gotta flip it upside down or wipe it off or something may have the, the shims may get dirty or something or whatever or inside the actual cap itself may have got dirty so you never know some of mine got dirty in the process of, of like grease and stuff like the engine oil and stuff like like sometimes i you know it's pretty stupid but i wouldn't suggest you try this pretty carb cleaner on the engine but if you put carb cleaner in the engine it's gonna really get really dirty you're gonna have to wipe it down again but like i did that by accident and i end up having to wipe it down and it got some inside some of the shit the, the, the valve caps itself so i just cleaned them out you know you can even use wd-40 to get off the grease or whatever and then put the shim in put it back in there just remember to put your shims in and also remember when you're putting on um the the carburetor make sure that these are tight down these are the hardest things to get to when you put on the carburetor eh? because you see the bolt it's on one side and it's on the next and then when you're trying to get into it the best way to do it is to use like um don't try to use like one of these because if you do have one of these like i do it's not going to go all the way in there when you have it inside the frame so your best bet is to use like a, a one that's loose or separate that you can just stick inside there or if you have like a uh one of these a socket like this like an allen head socket just stick an allen head socket in there and turn it to uh turn it clockwise and then you'll tighten it up just remember to do it clockwise because counterclockwise obviously will loosen the bolt right so just remember to do that and also make sure that there's little grooves inside uh the little um the actual you see these rubber pieces right here there's little grooves that the metal bracket has to be inside those grooves so just make sure that the metal bracket is on the grooves before you do it because if you do it'll eventually start squeezing on the actual metal of the, the carburetor and you don't want that obviously so make sure that all these grooves are are, are, are in the correct spot otherwise it's gonna screw up everything and yeah i'll uh, just pretty much make sure you double check i think uh one of the hardest things would have to be again would be um putting in a starter motor but the starter motor itself all you got to really do is um what i'm going to do i just sprayed some wd-40 into this hole right here and there's a little wheel on the inside you, you should notice that wheel because if you put on the clutch already you notice that after you put on the clutch boss you actually put on the clutch plate and then the clutch boss you'll notice that the clutch doesn't move freely like how it was if you had turned the transmission and you can see the pin on the other side move it doesn't move like that no more now you got to actually feel inside stick your finger inside where the starter motor goes and turn the little wheel on the inside and if you feel it turn that means it's still engaged to that because that little wheel is turning the actual plate behind the that is turning the actual disc behind the, the, the clutch plate so just make sure when you turn that that it's moving right and then you stick your starter motor in there i'm gonna spray some more wd-40 on that just to make sure that like 
it's well lubed up and i'm also going to try putting a little bit of grease under like i don't know if you have hair oil or whatever like i'd actually use hair oil like i said i'm running on like mineral supplies and I'm running on like the basic shit so i just put like a little bit like a thick coat of grease around there and just like pop it in you know what i'm saying i try to use the hammer to bang it in but it doesn't work so easy you got to kind of like pop it in so just make sure that uh you know you lube it up before because if you don't lube that up it's going to be a pain in the ass to get in there i tried like twice last night and it still didn't go in so i like i have to really crack around with it and i kind of turn the, the starter motor wheel hopefully it doesn't mess up the starter motor but i turn the starter motor wheel to the like to like a, a certain point it doesn't feel like it's supposed to turn i'll tell you that honestly but i did turn it and it went inside but it didn't go fully like how i wanted to it's supposed to sit like fully inside the motor i'm hoping it's the right starter motor so that's just my basic whole issue with that so hopefully um it is and i'm gonna put back on this gasket and this clutch plate like i said uh, when you're putting on any one of the pieces remember to put on your gasket on the dowels so that way you can let the the gasket itself hang off the dowels and you don't have a problem putting on the actual cover piece or anything like that just make sure all that's in there make sure you put on your head gasket i actually have a, a racing gasket it's uh from united kingdom i ordered it off ebay and stuff so all you got to do is pretty much go to ebay find the right gasket size and make sure that the gasket is in place properly and make sure that you torque down all your head bolts so that way all the head bolts are at one specific level like really and truly i don't even have a torque wrench i just took a wrench and started cranking at it like really until i felt tension right so i went and i spin it like three times and i felt like some tension in my arm so I was like all right it got to be torqued down to a good level not a not a way i would suggest to do it but i'm like this is also like the low budget way to rebuild your motor as opposed to like having every single piece and every single you know what i'm saying like i didn't even scrape off some of that some of the older gaskets and stuff like that so you can see all that right there it's still pretty much on the motor but this right here all i did was i basically took a flathead and then i like, kind of started like hacking at it so that way it would get off some of the like the extra build up and stuff like that so pretty much just remember to do that and you'll be fine remember to also put your exhaust gasket in because you, you you'll you'll do that i've actually had that done and actually seen smoke from the engine without having the exhaust gasket in so just make sure you put that in there and this part uh putting on this i lost the clip so your base your best bet if you do lose any pieces like supposed to tighten the rubber part on um take a zip tie just make sure it's loose enough that way you're able to cut it off so that way if you need to take this thing off you can take it off but i just took a zip tie and i just put it like around the motor and um it went back on pretty good you know it, it stays in there it doesn't feel like it moves but you never know until you start riding the bike right so uh i got an oil filter just went to crappy tire and i got an oil filter fram oil filter right there as you can see you know if you have an r1 a first gen r1 like what i have uh the best bet is to um just go to the the parts counter and ask them for a fram air filter i don't know if you can see that ph60178 it's a fram air filter they they make oil filters that can entire i got it for like maybe what six seven bucks i think i think the most it was maybe 14 bucks at max but um yeah just go to crappy tire and you can get one i also have another thing um the throttle cable the throttle cable i have a, a kink in my throttle cable i know a lot of people have, see a lot of videos up on youtube let me get what i'm talking about yeah so as you see right here um i see a lot of videos up on youtube telling you about how to solder a throttle cable and stuff like that but it's not actually telling you if you have like a kink in your throttle cable what you're supposed to do so i'm going to tell you guys what you're supposed to do if you have a, a kink in your throttle cable a what you can do is try your luck and try to solder it back but i'm telling you i even try to solder that back and you cannot solder back because it's running on like one here right now and i'm telling you if you start riding it's gonna snap like like twig so your best bet would be um what i actually learned to do is you can go to home depot and go to home depot and they sell uh metal rods like this that you can actually get from a cheap price i'm gonna go there in a couple of days to get one but you can get a metal rod like that and um all you gotta do is the ball point ends cut it off you see that end this is probably the part you're gonna have to solder back on but the solder will hold that in place don't worry about that there's also ones that you can just pop right back into place as you can see there's a, like a little hole in the ball pen tip right there you see that hole right there like 
that's a hole that you gotta use. But basically what you gotta do is, um, if I had the cable right now, I'd show you exactly what to do. Basically what you gotta do, you gotta cut off the cable, pull out the cable and then get the new cable and feed the cable through. That way it comes at the next side. And once you feed the cable through these ball pins, you can pretty much get them from like any mechanic shop or any like motorcycle shop or whatever, I guess. Let's go to your nearest bike shop or, or car shop or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You, it's also used for like throttle cables and cars and shit. So you can get them in pretty much anywhere. Let's pretty much go there. But the, the cable itself is uh, your best bet. It would be to go to Home Depot if you just have one and slide and buy a pin. They'll probably sell you a pin for maybe like five, six bucks, maybe, I guess. Um, I don't think it would be more than $10, but uh pretty much take that out cut it off and slide your pin through um point of me saying this is because there are a lot of videos on youtube telling you how to solder a cable but it's not telling you how to fix a kink in your cable and uh, i'm just basically letting you guys know you can't really fix that you basically have to go buy a new cable for that you know what i'm saying and and run the pin through and slide the, and insert the cable through so that way you have back the cable because that's what i'm gonna have to do the worst part about it is i tried ordering a throttle cable twice and both times like it was unsuccessful like i ordered a thought cable sat it on wait for a month to the point i got pissed off and i was like you know what fuck it i'm gonna go like literally go buy um i'm literally gonna go buy a thought cable for my phone uh buy use back my cable or just run a metal rod down so i actually went to a shop and he explained to me also what somewhat of a youtube video was explained to me um is basically just going to home depot and buying a metal rod and just sliding feeding the rod through that way the rod will go back and through and then bomb you have a new cable but that's pretty much your only way to fix back a kink in your cable you know what i'm saying instead of just telling you uh how to solder on the end right like that's useless like every almost a dozen videos i've seen on youtube are telling you how to solder on the ends but none of them are telling you fix how to kink in your cable and i even thought of trying to solder that back and this is impossible so just for you guys information you need a new cable and you're gonna have to go to home depot and you're gonna have to go get pins from a mechanic the ball end pins and that you may have to solder back on these parts but not a kink in the cable like as if you have like this you're pretty much fucked sorry for my language all right so that's basically um just like a quick review on how to like easily do do a, a cheaper rebuild on your on your bike uh so that way I'll, I'll post more videos on youtube if i go further on about doing stuff like that like the, the complicated stuff i'll post that you won't find on youtube I, i'm gonna pretty much try and do so um this is just a quick review of what how i did it and how i managed to do it i pretty much did it mostly myself i did have a bit of help like torquing down the bolts but most of this was done myself so it's like this is a quick review and showing you if you plan on rebuilding your bike yourself or you plan on rebuilding an r1 yourself like what i did i'll uh, take you show you a quick review on my bike this doesn't have the motor on it but you can take a look at it this is my r1 uh, I pretty much went um I went uh pretty much went ham with it. I went and got stickers and stuff like that. So as you can see the motor's over there on the bench and I'm working on it. So this is pretty much what I did. Um pretty soon I'll be actually doing this as right now I'm not I'm in the process